Calispera. Good evening. Ambassador of the United States of America, Jeffrey Pyatt, Mrs. Pyatt, Minister of Education, Research, and Religious Affairs, Gavroglu, Ambassadors, members of the Fulbright Board, Fulbright alumni, friends, scholars, students, distinguished guests, welcome. On behalf of the Fulbright Foundation in Greece, it is a pleasure and a privilege to welcome you to an evening of celebration to honor a great program and all those who support and participate in it. At this point, I have to ask you to remind you to switch off your phones <laughs> because the event is recorded and live streamed so alumni and friends in different parts of Greece and around the globe can follow. Fulbright counts many members and its family. What more fitting as a location than the grounds of the American School of Classical Studies at Cotson Hall? The relationship with Fulbright Greece is long-standing and growing stronger and instrumental, especially during the first years. Bert Hodge Hill, a name that may not be familiar to most of you, was the first Fulbright executive director and was previously and had previously served as a director of the school. 2018 marks 70 years of academic and cultural exchanges between Greece and the United States. From 1948, when the program first started, and right up to the present, the program has never stopped providing scholarships to Greek citizens, students, uh, and scholars to study and conduct research in America, and welcoming American scholars, students, and researchers and artists to Greece. Since its inception, Fulbright has created a cultural and intellectual bridge, a scientific, sorry, cultural and intellectual bridge between Greece and the United States, providing grants to more than 5,500 American and Greek students, scholars, researchers, teachers, and artists, and offering free advising to thousands of citizens interested to study in the United States. Fulbright is a program that remains as vibrant as it was in its beginning. Over the years, scholarships and educational programs offered by the Fulbright Foundation have grown in number and diversity and have adapted to ensure a positive impact in Greece. Collaborations between Greek and US educational and cultural institutions have been enhanced and offer new opportunities. An example in hand, a recent example in hand, is actually the Greek Diaspora Fellowship Program supported by the Stavros Niarchos Foundation, which allows Greek-born academics that are teaching in universities in the United States and Canada to come to Greece and collaborate with their colleagues in Greek universities, even for short periods of time, hence reversing the brain drain and making it brain circulation, which eventually results to brain gain. As demand for education rises and students explore new destination, Fulbright's role has also been essential to promote Greece as an educational destination. Education destination Greece, we call it. And it has become very, very popular the last decades, and the numbers based on different researchers are growing. And this is very encouraging. And we have several partners in this country that sort of like enhance this kind of work. Very important is also the fact that Fulbright grants have a multiplier effect because the benefits are not restricted just to the people who receive the scholarship and their families, but have an impact on the broader professional and scientific community and environment. Fulbright is about teamwork and collaborations. The success of the Fulbright program depends on many individuals, and I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all those who have contributed throughout the year. Several are here in the audience today. Special acknowledgement to the Fulbright Board of Directors for their continued support and guidance. The US Embassy in Athens Public Diplomacy Team under the leadership of Public Affairs Councilor Monica Cummings, the US, Council, the US Consulate in Thessaloniki, the Hellenic Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs, all of our partners in Greek universities, and many, many others. I also want to recognize the hard work and dedication of the Fulbright staff, a small yet effective, resourceful team of professionals. 
I was very fortunate to inherit a wonderful program when I first started more than a decade plus ago. And this IO, and I want to sort of like pay tribute for just a minute to my predecessor, William Chip Ammerman, who was the executive director for a little over 20 years and passed away last August. We have with us at the audience today, Aliki Ammerman. Thank you, Aliki, and thank you, Chip, for giving me a wonderful program to continue. We begin our ceremony today with remarks from the US ambassador, Jeffrey Pyatt, honorary chairman of the Fulbright Board. Thank you and Mary for your unwavering support and continuous guidance from day one of your arrival. Mr. Ambassador. Kalispera, thank you, Artemis, for that warm introduction. Good evening, Minister Gavorlu, members of the Fulbright Board and staff, Fulbright scholars and students, distinguished guests. It is my pleasure to be with you again tonight to honor a great program and all those who support and participated in it. This annual ceremony celebrates Greek and American scholars. I remember warmly the event we had exactly a year ago in the garden at our residence. But this year marks a special occasion, the 70th anniversary of the Fulbright program in Greece. And in this regard, I was particularly touched by the warm words that President Pavlopoulos offered at his remarks a few weeks ago, when we were able to have the honor of marking the Fulbright anniversary at the Presidential Palace. Today, the Fulbright program is recognized as the premier international educational program in the world. Fulbright fosters academic excellence and freedom, intellectual integrity, and cross-cultural awareness. But it is much more than an educational exchange. It is one of the cornerstone of our strategic partnerships around the world. As partners and allies, the United States and Greek governments share perspectives on broad challenges, discuss interests and concerns, and promote common goals. Those mutual efforts show that the United States has, with Greece, a strong relationship. And while our respective government leaders get most of the credit for this accomplishment, our strong relationships at the individual level and the close enduring ties between our citizens are also important. Nowhere are these people-to-people -people ties stronger than in the area of education. Reaching out and bringing international students to the US is important to the growth and diversity of our academic institutions. Studying abroad promotes mutual understanding between countries and creates lifelong friendships across borders and seas. The relationships that follow connect our political, economic, and cultural lives and make them more vibrant. Everywhere I go in Greece, I have university administrators and local government leaders asking me for more Fulbright scholars, visiting professors and students, showing that Greek academics understand the great value of these exchanges. Senator Fulbright also understood the importance of educational exchange when he, when he created the scholarship program that later became his namesake. He spoke of the importance that the program could play in diplomacy. He said that educational exchange programs turn nations into people and contribute to the humanizing of international relations. Senator Fulbright's initiative was a bold one at the beginning of the Cold War era, when most were focused on existential military challenges. But he turned out to be right. Exchange programs create friendships and understanding between cultures, which in turn increases security and cooperation. Based on Senator Fulbright's vision, the Fulbright Exchange Program has become the model for educational exchange. More than 155 countries 
and 300,000 individuals have participated in the Fulbright program worldwide since its inception in 1946. Fulbright alumni include 37 Nobel Prize winners and 65 Pulitzer Prize winners, as well as many, many other distinguished professionals. The Fulbright Foundation in Greece is no exception, as it was the first in Europe and is the second oldest continuously operating Fulbright program in the world. Since its establishment in 1948, more than 5,500 scholarships have been awarded to Greek and American scholars. The Fulbright program in Greece boasts two prime ministers, numerous ministers, parliamentarians, a Nobel laureate, leading academics and bankers, and famous artists among its alumni ranks. To name just a few prominent alumni, Eleni Atoniadi, an expert in bioengineering who has received recognition from the scientific community worldwide for her involvement in life-saving therapies for artificial organ in transplants. My friend George Stathakis, the current Minister of Environment and Energy and a scholar of the Marshall Plan era. Dimitri Papianu, choreographer and artistic director of the 2004 Athens Olympic Games. And the late Angelos de Lavorius, president of the Benaki Museum and one of the most prominent scholars and leaders of the Greek cultural scene. And last, but certainly not least, the renowned artist and director, Yanis Simonidis, who I had the pleasure of seeing perform his rendition of Yanis Makrianis last week here at the Gennadius Library. As I noted earlier, in April, I was honored to participate in a special ceremony hosted by President Pavlopoulos, who made very clear the Greek state's full commitment to the Fulbright program. And I particularly appreciate the presence here this evening of the Minister of Education. I look forward to the great success of the Fulbright program in the future as well. And it is in this spirit in which tonight we recognize the 2018 recipients of Fulbright scholarships. To be awarded a Fulbright scholarship is to join an elite group of individuals who represent the best in their fields and who embody the spirit of education and global understanding. My congratulations to you all. I would also like to congratulate the Fulbright Foundation in Greece for their commitment to nurturing the close relationship between our two countries. I can tell you that it were just, if it were just up to us diplomats and politicians, we would not be where we are today, and we would not have the breadth and depth in the US-Greek alliance. It takes individuals like you and organizations like this one to keep the relationship strong. And I'd like to give special thanks to Artemis and her dedicated, hardworking colleagues at the Fulbright Foundation, who every year make this program such a great success. And of course, and lastly, I would like to thank the many donors of the Fulbright Foundation here in Greece, the corporations, foundations, and individuals that every year renew their trust in the importance of the educational exchanges and bilateral ties that Fulbright creates. So in closing, I would like to wish happy 70th, uh, happy, uh, happy 70th birth, birthday to the Fulbright program in Greece. Hronia Pola, you're looking good. Evaristopoli. <laughs> Thank you, Ambassador. In fact, someone told us that we look good for being 70. Should I take that as a compliment? I don't know. So as we continue the program, Minister Avroglu, it's a pleasure to have you again with us here today. I know you had a very taxing day managing our country's affairs, and we're very appreciative that you're here. And let me just... Kalisperesis. Ambassador, I also wish my very best from the part of the 
the government for today's anniversary. And I'd like to tell you one thing about what we've been doing in the universities that has to do with the Fulbright program. I will spare you of the details of our reform plan, but we made the conditions for visiting professors much more flexible. And for the first time, we are going to have undergraduate programs in English. Uh, we were able to overcome uh, various legal and not only legal difficulties. So uh, I think this is something that will be very much uh, in favor of a lot of people who are visiting our country. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to share with you one of the issues that is very much part of our thinking and of our difficulties for the next day when we discuss educational issues. And this is what will happen to the educational institutions when the printed world has been so dramatically transformed during the last decade. All our educational institutions are based on the book. The book culture, it's around the book culture that we have most of our intellectual life, almost all of our academic life, as well as the form of the institutions themselves. Now, the printed world is going through some very radical transformations, and we don't know what will happen. And what will happen will have an effect for decades, perhaps centuries to come. And we are always very interested in specialists or people who discuss those issues to come and tell us if they think along those lines, along those lines about a future about which we know very few things about which very few things are constant, especially in their institutional setting. I'm saying this because I know uh, a lot of the scholars have been thinking along uh, these lines. And this, of course, is over and beyond, transcends an instrumental notion of the internet or whatever. But it has some very deep repercussions. And we are very, will be very, very much interested uh, for scholars to come and tell us uh, your views uh, about this particular uh, issue. Um, in Greece, one of the things that we are very good at is when something goes wrong, to ask why it has gone wrong. Today, I'd like to ask the question, what has gone right? for something that has been going on for 70 years. And if you think about it, the answer is really very simple. It is something which was set up on exclusive academic criteria, something which continued with academic criteria, and something, an institution that because it was set up on academic criteria, was more or less resistant to a lot of political interventions. And this is something of extreme importance, and this is something that in the new days that we'll be going as a country, uh, we value very much and we feel that our own thinking will learn something from the success of the 70 years of the Fulbright Foundation. I thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Cavroglu. And in fact, it was interesting that you said that 
for by its role was not subject to political pressures. This is actually testament to the ingenuity of Senator Fulbright because when he created the program, what he thought is like, how can I protect it from different point of views? So he created an international board that members were appointed by different political parties, hence to, to maintain its independence. But the success of the program, the integral success of the program relies to the Fulbright alumni who are spectacular ambassadors. Sorry for those that are true ambassadors, but also our Fulbright alumni are actually incredible ambassadors, both in the US and in Greece. Alumni remain active and involved beyond the completion of their grants in a variety of ways, including participation in review committees, educational outreach programs, and most recently, the Dynamic Art Supports Education Initiative to help raise funds for scholarship. This culture of commitment within Fulbright, of which we're especially proud, can make and does make a difference. And a testament today, if you would see actually, we need to change our slide actually. If we, we look at our program, is that we have managed to have with us some distinguished alumni, both from the US and Greece that have traveled from near and far away to share their experiences and tell a little bit about the Fulbright story. What is incredible, and you will hear about it shortly, is how grants that happened more than some of them six decades ago are still strong and ties are very strong. I'm pleased to present and Carol Becker, Professor of Arts and Dean of Faculty at Columbia University School of the Arts, Harris Pastidis, President of the University of South Carolina, and James Wright, Professor Emeritus, Department of Classical and Near Eastern Archaeology, Bryn Mawr College, and former member of the Fulbright Board. We will start with Carol, some brief, wonderful testimonials about how Greece was in the 80s. Carol, thank you. Hello, everyone. Kalispera. It's such an honor when there are 5,000 Fulbrights out there to be chosen to be one of a very small group to speak tonight. So I'm just going to jump right in. Can everyone hear me? Sound OK? OK, good. The first time I applied for a Fulbright to Greece, I was turned down. But the representative on the call insisted that I would make a good candidate for another location. Would you consider Warsaw, she inquired. The meat rationing is over, and things are looking up. I stared out my Chicago window as we talked. It was a sleeting January day, and although my gene pool is half Polish, I can honestly say that was about as unappealing an offer as I could imagine. <laughs> Apart from the Aegean and the Mediterranean weather, contemporary Greek women poets also were very much on my mind. The next time I applied, I got the call I was hoping for although not to Athens, as I had specified, but rather to Corfu, a dream I had not anticipated. So in 1989, I became one of the first Fulbright scholars ever to teach at the Ionian University in Corfu. One rainy winter night, I landed at the Corfu airport expecting to be picked up by the chair of my program, the Department of Foreign Languages, Translation and Interpreting, and other faculty. But it seems they were not expecting someone like me, because the group apparently had walked past me more than once. When we finally did connect, the chair said that he had been looking for an American, by which he meant, quote, someone dressed in pastels who was not sure if Corfu was part of Italy or Greece. <laughs> what he encountered that night was a New Yorker, then living in Chicago, who, in my black winter coat, purchased in a chilly Athens, blended in very well with the arriving Greeks. I also knew a bit about Corfu, having spent some weeks there in 1967, when dolphins still leapt out of the Ionian Sea. On my first day at the university, I learned that I was already infamous. I had sent ahead so many articles to be photocopied for my students that the poor man running the copying machine had been complaining about me for weeks. <laughs> he called my course packet the stack, and rude the day I was ever accepted to teach at the university. 
I was offering two seminars at that time, one in American cultural history and one in 19th century American literature. For the cultural history class, I wanted to give students a sense of the complexity of American society, so I had sent ahead many articles, original documents of the Ku Klux Klan, Chicana lesbian poetry, Native American memoirs, excerpts from the writings of Frederick Douglass, and so forth. I found my translation students amazingly intelligent, very adept in English and in many other languages as well. For fun, they often took a paragraph from ancient Greek, they translated it into modern Greek, they moved it into French or Spanish, and then some other language such as, oh, Danish or Dutch. I was surprised that not all students came to class, but they came close to the building at least, and they would wave to me as I walked by <laughs> the cafes in the Listone, Yasu, Kedia Beck, they would say without guilt or explanation. But the most conscientious students I taught at the Ionian University were some of the most brilliant students I have taught anywhere. I lived outside Corfu town in a hillside village called Agiosianis. I bought a small fiat from a friend of my landlord, Lazarus. I traveled to the surrounding islands of Paxi and Antipaxi, made several trips to Athens and around Europe, froze in the damp winter while adjusting to bank strikes, bus strikes, boat strikes, postal strikes, and electricity strikes. I reveled in spring when small white flowers could be seen coming up through the black olive nets and green was everywhere. All the while, I struggled to learn Greek. I also made friendships that continue to this day. In my years in Chicago, each week, I ate the most delicious roasted chicken in a small Greek restaurant called the Athenian Room. During those long, dreary winters in the Midwest, that wood-paneled room lined with framed pictures of the blue, blue Aegean was a haven. Most memorable was the sign above the cash register that read, quote, Greece is a love affair that God had with the planet Earth. How much the owners must have longed for those islands, how often they returned, or why they ever left, I never did ask. I have always been at home in Greece. I felt this from my first trip down the Dalmatian coast to Mount Olympus and on to Corfu in 1967. I believe it is part of my life's journey to return to Greece again and again, to root myself deeply in this country, and I forever thank the Fulbright for helping me to fulfill that destiny. Thank you. Good evening and Kalispera, everyone. It is uh, sentimental for me to have arrived in Athens on a day of a uh, taxi strike, <laughs> as that was exactly what happened the day I arrived as a Fulbrighter in 1988. Uh, Ambassador Pyatt and Minister Gavroglu and members of the board, friends of Fulbright, everyone, what a deep honor to be here today. I start with a quotation from Euripides who said, experience and travel are as educations in themselves experience and travel are educations. And for me and my family, this in fact is the philosophy and the sentiment that captures the meaning and impact of our time as a Fulbright family here in Athens in 1988. I say as a family because that is also the meaning of Fulbright. Our children, for example, who at ages of four and six thought that the children in their Babagu neighbor, neighborhood were simply brilliant because they already spoke Greek. <laughs> you see, they thought that every child around the world first learned English and then they would learn another language. And Patricia, who was also, I would call, my co-Fulbrighter, uh, who today is a successful author of two Greek cookbooks and Mediterranean lifestyle books, is an international ambassador for you, for the Greek people, as a result of the Fulbright experience. And then there is me, the Fulbright research scholar who was recently tenured at the University of Massachusetts Amherst as an epidemiologist and got to come to Athens to work with Professor Dimitrios Trihopoulos, one of the great 
great scientists of this country or any country. And we worked together on a study that helped forever change the concept that wine is bad for health. <laughs> you see, we found that in moderation, wine is good for human health. <laughs> of course, Pyth Pythagoras and many knew that many, many centuries ago, but it took a young Fulbrighter to, to come and to try to prove that. All of this in less than one year, professional success, international scientific collaboration, and unforgettable and meaningful family progress. All of this together, multiplied by 70 years, is the impact and legacy of Fulbright in Greece. Today, I'm pleased to serve as the chair of the Fulbright Advisory Board. Some of you may know that as the CIES in the United States, and I remain committed to, uh, to uh, continuing to uh, uh, advocate for the best of Fulbright, but while also seeking change and new flexibility to meet the demands of scholars in the United States and around, and around the world as those demands have continued to change. My, unoffic my unofficial job is to be an advocate in the US Congress for continued funding for Fulbright, something that uh, members of our Department of State cannot do as directly as I can do. And I can tell you that the fact that there is bilateral support, that there is support from the Greek government and from philanthropists, from organizations and individuals who will be recognized later today is extremely important and remains a primary reason why the Fulbright program continues to be funded in the United States. I also serve on the uh, the Niarchos Foundation Advisory Board, as Artemis mentioned earlier, which is not exactly a Fulbright program, but has gathered its inspiration from Fulbright as well. So in closing, let me uh, 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 invoke another Greek philosopher, Aristotle, and maybe he was thinking of Fulbright several thousand years down the road when he said that friendship is a single soul dwelling in two bodies. In fact, Fulbright is a single soul dwelling in the hearts and minds of the people of Greece and the United States of America. I will forever remain great grateful for my Fulbright experience in 1988. Zito Yelava, Zito the United States of America. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here, uh, Minister Navroglu and Ambassador Pyatt. Um, I held a research Fulbright in 1985-86. My entire family came to Greece and uh, lived here in Kolonaki, and we became Kolonaki Athenians at that time. In fact, I regularly ate at Philippou, and I would take my son Nico, who was three years old, to lunch with me. Well, that disappeared pretty quickly because he was studying, he was, up, he was in a preschool at uh, Maria's Montessori School up the street, and his Greek was quite good. And he became a personal friend of former Prime Minister Paniotis Kanalopoulos, who would invite him over to the table, and they would chat away while I ate lunch by myself. <laughs> my, son, my son says it's not fair that he wasn't given a Fulbright that year. He doesn't even remember the lunches. Another thing that I did while I was a Fulbright member was played basketball we, with other members of the American school. We'd often play in the Morosley School, but from time to time we'd go up to Panathinaiko Stadium and play there. One day we were playing and there were some Greek fellows there and we realized that we wanted to have a game together. So we thought, hey, we invented this game, we'll show them how to play basketball. <laughs> what a mistake. We weren't very good cultural ambassadors. They completely cleaned up on us. And there was a lesson in that. Why would we have assumed that just because we were Fulbright scholars here that we would know how to play basketball better than somebody else, that it had already become an international uh, game? And that just reminded me of a lesson I had learned many years early, earlier when I came here in 1972 as, uh, to participate in the American School of Classical Studies program 
the director said to us, remember in the year that you're here that the Greeks are your hosts and you are the foreigners, not the other way around. That actually was a tremendous piece of advice that I have chewed over during my long association with Greece. And I've always tried to turn the tables on myself so that the cultural awareness that I would develop would begin to seep in. I've never tried to be Greek, I'm an American, but I do try to see through Greek eyes and understand things. And one of my great experiences in the year I was here as a Fulbright was being invited to give a lecture at the University of Yanina. The day that I flew up in, in, in 1986 to Yanina was the same day that the United States bombed Muammar Gaddafi's residence in Libya and killed his son. The 80s was a difficult time to be an American here sometimes, and that was a particularly inauspicious day to, for an American to come and give a lecture. But fortunately, I'd prepared my lecture in Greek. It was the first lecture that I presented in Greek. A friend had translated it for me, and I stumbled through it, and everybody was very excited because first they actually understood everything I said, and they were very grateful that I'd made that effort. And I was so struck by the University of Yanina then. It had very unassuming buildings. If any of you were students there in the 80s, you knew that they were fair, fairly run down. But the department and the library were exceptional. The books were so carefully selected for the students. The faculty were so invested in their program. And I made great friends back then in the Department of uh, Archaeology and History at the University of Yanina, who continue to be close friends today and my associations with them live on through uh, contacts and collaborations that I have with their students. And I was uh, terribly impressed by the effort that they put into and the dedication that they put into the work that they, uh, that they do. And many years later, I was elected director of the American School of Classical Studies here, and I got to live five years in Greece continuously, which was a real dream for me. Uh, and during that time, I sat, as Artemis said, on the board of directors. And I also began to collaborate with individuals in the Ministry of Culture and the various aphorias in ways that I had never really been able to do before. And I began to understand uh, how dedicated people are who work in this country, how hard they work, and what it is that they accomplish, sometimes in in situations of extreme difficulty. From 2012 to the present, Greece went through uh, different governments, gone through the EFASI and all of the memorandums uh, in its uh, negotiations with the European Union and the IMF. It's been a time of tremendous crisis and political turmoil. But remarkable things have been done, particularly in the field of archaeology, particularly in the field of historic conservation and preservation. And I've learned how important it is taking this point of view of uh, seeing through the eyes of others how possible it is to create collaborations that really allow one to get inside the community that flourishes here in Greece and accomplish things through uh, coordinated and joint efforts. And that's particularly true in my work for Fulbright here where under the leadership of our Ms. Zanetu and her dedicated staff, and also the directors and the support from the uh, embassy, we have seen an incredibly dynamic program that's entirely different from the program I participated in in the 1980s. It's, 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 it's innovative, it's seeking new ways to bring Americans into Greek schools, into Greek universities, in contact with people who are dealing with all kinds of issues that affect Greeks today, and likewise sending Greeks out to uh, the United States to participate in academic exchange uh, that is part of this network that Ambassador Pyatt referred to that provides the important soft diplomacy that holds us together, that binds us together globally in a network that's intergenerational and that continues for very little money to provide good in a world that needs more of it. Thank you very much. Carol, Harry's dream, 
thank you all for your very insightful comments and sort of like walking us through of Greece past and demonstrating the multiplier effect and the long lasting relationships that Fulbright creates. Now, we move to the other part of the world, to our Greek alumni who travel to the US. Some of them may not reside in Greece these days and may reside in other parts of the world, but they service their, our country in exemplary ways and they further the Fulbright spirit and the relationships that this program instills. We have today with us Alexander Morelatos, Professor Emeritus of Philosophy and of Classics, the University of Austin at Texas, Ambassador Mara Marinakis, EUEEAS Principal Advisor on Gender Issues and on Women, Peace and Security, and Maria Gazzulli, Associate Professor of Molecular Biology, Medical School, National and Capodistrian University of Athens, and President of the Alumni Association. We will start first with Alexander Morelatos, who has traveled to the US in the early 50s, and he still remains in the US, servicing us in exemplary ways, because he felt that he defected the program and he stayed, and we told him, no, you better serve Greece by being in the US. Thank you for making that journey to be here on our celebration. The philosopher Alfred North Whitehead said that uh, in order for education to work, it has to follow three stages, like the Hegelian thesis antithesis business, but he didn't like that terminology. Whitehead spoke instead of the moment of romance in education, of the moment of precision that comes after romance, and then the moment of synthesis or generalization. Um, I don't think there is any other system anywhere in the world that does the moment of romance in education as well as it is done in the United States. This is something I didn't realize at the time when I was applying to study in the United States uh, for my uh, undergraduate studies, because that's how I started. My family in Greece very much wanted me to be a doctor. That's what Greek boys are supposed to do. Uh, so I very, very dutifully uh, uh, oriented myself for the future of a career in medicine. Soon, already before I was close to graduating from Athens College, which was my high school in Greece, um, I, I, I knew that medicine in the United States is a graduate subject. You first have to do your degree in something else. As an undergraduate, you have to take four pre-medical subjects, pre-medical pre courses, two, uh, uh, two semesters of biology, two semesters of physics, four semesters of chemistry, including organic chemistry. Um, but otherwise, uh, you can explore all the marvels of a four-year education in an arts and science setting in an American college or university. Uh, so, uh, uh, nonetheless, I had to have some, some major and declare some major. And my teachers at Athens College said, well, medicine, you should go for biochemistry. You should major in my biochemistry. So when I put my applications uh, through the uh, program that was administered by the Fulbright at the Institute of International Education in New York, with the help of the one marvelous and very generous help of the Office of the Cultural Attaché in the US Embassy, I listed biochemistry as what I was going to study in the United States um, before, of course, going on to study medicine. Well, when I got uh, to my sc school, Yale University, um, I had signed up for some science classes, but all my roommates were reading things that I found much too tempting. Uh, they were studying Greek tragedy. They were studying Chaucer. They were studying history of art, history of music. Um, so I go to my pre-medical advisor. I said, do, do I really need to study all of these sciences to uh, 
go to medical school? He said, no, there's just these four courses that you're supposed to take, that's all. You can major in anything. Um, I said, I, could I major in uh, philosophy? And he said, well, why, of course. We want doctors uh, to have a broad education, to be cultured, to be able to talk to their patients in the right way. Yes, I think that'll be fine. You should major in philosophy. Well, you know what happened. <laughs> I did not do what I was sent by the Fulbright to do. <laughs> I got hooked, I got charmed by philosophy. And uh, even so, I resisted ancient philosophy because that was too Greek. I was sent to America. I was sent to America to do something modern. Okay, well, I, I didn't do medicine, I didn't do engineering, I didn't do. Um, uh, uh, computer science, uh, or didn't uh, hotel administration, one of those practical subjects. But at least I was going to do modern philosophy, modern philosophy. And I uh, stayed with that with fanaticism. I still I started writing my dissertation. And uh, then I rediscovered or rediscovered ancient Greek philosophy. And I wasn't able to get away from that. And uh, uh, before I had a chance to make other plans, uh, I got hired to teach philosophy, um, first at my alma mater, Yale University. Um, then I was on a postdoctoral at the University of Wisconsin. And then at some, uh, some later stage in that year, I got an offer from the University of Texas at Austin um, I called my advisor and I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to leave from Yale. I'm supposed to go back. Uh, and, um, but I have this offer from the University of Texas. My advisor said, you go back to Yale, they probably will put you into something being master of a college or in administration, something like this, because of all the years that you spent at Yale. Um, you should go to the University of Texas and see whether you can start a program in ancient philosophy. Well, that's what I did. And I think it worked. And in the end, I believe I have done more uh, for my contacts with Greece and for exchanges with my colleagues in the field in Greece. And also, uh, eventually, of course, I did have the marvelous opportunity to teach for three years or for three semesters at the University of Crete. So uh, in a way of unintended consequences and the mysterious ways in which uh, luck works in our life, um, Fulbright wanted me to do something else, but uh, I think it worked well that I became a scholar in philosophy, and specifically in the history of ancient Greek philosophy. Now, this is a moment of special emotion for me, because this is an anniversary of the Fulbright Foundation. Um, I'm, I'm in the gerontological section of the uh, Fulbright, because it was my, my year was 1955, and that was also the year I enrolled at Yale. And uh, if you count the years, 1958 was the year I graduated from college. And this is the 60th year since graduation. And my class had a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Καλησπέρα σας. Κύριε Υπουργέ, Ambassador Payet, Madam Executive Director, Members of the Fulbright Board, Ladies and Gentlemen. 
I'm also a native child of Fulbright. And uh, I'm really honored and humbled to be in such an illustrious company tonight. This is a very special moment. So I would like to thank you for the invitation to express my gratitude and best wishes on this special celebration for the 70th anniversary of the Fulbright program. For me and for so many others, alumni and alumni, men and women in Greece and worldwide, Fulbright offered us the golden key to open up our horizons with new avenues of opportunities, prospects, and progress. Since 1948 and for 70 years, the Fulbright program has been helping Greece to invest in its most valuable capital by helping us provide better higher education possibilities to our youth. Ultimately, after the Second World War and our post-war plights in Greece, the US and all of you in the Fulbright program could not give us back our past, but you helped us shape our future. My formative Boston years as the Hubert Humphrey Fellow at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, the Kennedy School of Government, and the Harvard Law School helped me hone my diplomatic skills. And now I'm also proud to be part of the new European Union architecture in external action and help shape our common future between the European Union, Greece, and the United States. And I feel that Greece and Europe will continue to need you now more than ever. As by helping invest through education in shaping the future of our youth, you make the best possible investment also to ensure the future of our transatlantic dialogue. The United States, together with Greece, together with the European Union, to face our common threats and challenges as enduring partners. And uh, I also feel that we need uh, to build on these solid cornerstones of education and freedom of speech, of thought, and of expression as the underpinnings of our relations, of our policies, and ultimately of our future. I would like to paraphrase the famous quote attributed to Alexander the Great, who is also highly timely these days. O filo sto batera mu to zin, ke sto daskalo mu to evzin. So, if you allow me to paraphrase, I'm indebted to my father, and I would definitely add to my mother for living. But also to Fulbright, and to all my teachers for living well. And by living well, I should define that it means teaching me to live uh, with dignity, with ethos, and guided by our shared fundamental values and principles. This is how life is worth living, after all. For these shared values, so many of us will be eternally grateful to the Fulbright Foundation, and I wish the best of luck to future recipients of this very special gift. So I would like to thank the Fulbright Foundation for a few things. Thank you for all the wonderful people that I have met. Thank you for all the lifelong friends that I have made, and some of them are in this room tonight. Thank you for making my life so much richer and so much more beautiful, for making my mind so much broader with a bird's view of what others think, feel, and fear to open up and better understand. 
Thank you for offering me the trip to Ithaca. It was worth it every step of the way. I will always be a proud member of the Fulbright family, and thank you indeed for this opportunity. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Minister of Education, friends of Fulbright, Fulbright donors, alumni, welcome to the United States, the immigration officer declared at Dallas International Airport, and my Fulbright experience began on 2012 at College Park, University of Maryland. As professor, my experience was personally and professionally transforming. It was an eye-opening learning experience. It was a journey encouraging innovation and collaboration across cultures. I had the opportunity to explore the most advanced research equipment and techniques, develop and create in an international competitive environment in a field that was not well known in Greece those days, in nanomedicine. The Fulbright experience had reinforced my belief in the value of cross-cultural community and importance of international cooperation in all fields of human aspects, including research and education, like improving university research and innovation management and translating research beyond the academic community to deliver broader positive economic and community impact. The Fulbright experience for me has not added it lives on in the many friends and collaborators I have made and kept. As president of the Association of Fulbright Scholars in Greece, the oldest association in Europe, it is almost 40 years. It began in 1748. I can state that I remain an idealist and believe in the power and grace of people to create a joyful, purposeful and inclusive community such as the Fulbright Association community. So with these words, I would like to congratulate all the new grandees, future alumni, and when you return home, we will be happy to include you as valuable members in our association. Good luck and success to your Fulbright fascinating experience. Thank you for showing this culture of commitment. Your words were inspiring. And again, on behalf of Fulbright, I truly appreciate your graciousness in accepting this invitation and traveling from different parts of the world to be here today in different parts of our country. Today's event is one of the most important events of the academic year for Fulbright, an occasion to publicly present the scholarship recipients, and acknowledge our donors. They say fundraising, we say friends raising. And we have raised a number of friends that continue to be our friends for many, many decades. It is a testament to the strength of the program that even in the midst of great challenges, economic, social, cultural, for Greece and the world, Education continues to retain its essential role in confronting difficulties and providing new expressions of hope. We're proud that for academic year 2018-2019, we surpassed our goal. We wanted to offer at least 70 scholarships. We nearly reached 80. So 79 scholarships this year, 41 to Greek citizens and 38 grant to US citizens representing a diverse range of academic disciplines and educational institutions in Greece and in the US. Fulbright grants are awarded in almost every discipline. The support of scholarship towards education is more critical than ever, despite a budget-tightening culture. The binational approach is the hallmark that distinguishes the Fulbright Academic Exchange from most other exchange programs, either private or public. Primary funding comes from the government of the United States, the US Department of State, and the Greek government also supports and has a commitment over the years to the Fulbright program. 
the growth and scholarship of our program relies on the valuable support from other foundations, organizations, corporations, and individuals in both countries. On behalf of the Fulbright Foundation, I would like to acknowledge the continued support of our donors who believe and invest in the power of education and make this scholarship possible. Your support is more critical now than ever before. Donors for academic year 2018-2019, foundations and organizations, Bank of Greece, John Kostopoulos Foundation, the Hellenic Initiative, John Latsis Public Benefit Foundation, Levendis Foundation, George Livanos Foundation, Stavros Niarchos Foundation, Corporations, Coca-Cola Elas, Eurobank Asset Management, Athens Exchange Group, Intracom Holdings, National Bank of Greece, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Procter and Gamble, AG Spanos Companies, Educational Organizations, Associations and Individuals, the Hellenic American Educational Foundation, the International Propeller Club, Port of Piraeus, Salzburg Global Seminar, Santa Fe Art Institute, Anonymous Donor, Alexander Gigilinis, Peter Mirian, Alexander Simotas, and Miranda Xafa. The Foundation also wishes to acknowledge the numerous individuals who offer their support through pro bono services, as well as those who support the Fulbright Alumni Art Series, Art Supports Education, a grassroots fundraising initiative. At this point, I would like to introduce U.S. student and accomplished musician, George Katechis from Manhattan School of Music in New York, who just completed his grant at the University of Macedonia Department of Music, Science, and Art. And he will read the names of the American grantees who, co who just completed their grant. Not all of them are here today because some have already completed their grant. And then alumna, Daphne Papadopoulou, educator who completed her grant in the US in 2012-2013 academic year at Amherst, at Amherst Institute of Training and Development in Massachusetts, and will announce the name of the Greek scholarship recipients. Ambassador Payet, Minister Havrogla, would like to invite to the stage so that we can start the ceremony and meet our guests. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, give a quick thank you to Artemis for allowing me to this honor to uh, present my colleagues and to be in a room on such a joyous occasion, in a room of such knowledge and talent and skill. Uh, hopefully, if I do a half decent job at this, she can book me for the 140th celebration. I'd like to pencil that in my calendar now, if possible. So without a further delay, from the scholar program, Jacobson, Kristen Jean, Literature, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Katsaru, Eleni, Education, University of Patra. Matsaganis, Matthew, Communications, National and Kapodistrian University of Athens, Pantheon University of Social and Political Sciences, National Center for Social Research. Graduate students, Abdel Rahim, Sarah Ibrahim, Political Science, Pantheon University of Social and Political Sciences. <laughs> Beck Schachter, Aaron Josiah, Classical Languages and Literature, the American School of Classical Studies. Galgano, Annalisa, Political Science, Higgs Higher Incubator, Giving Growth and Sustainability, the Municipality of Athens. <laughs> Surushian, Vishtasp, Mayor, Pol Public Administration, University of the Aegean, Mitilini, Solidarity Now. <laughs> From the Distinguished Awards and Teaching Program, Gray, Vincent, Social Studies, National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. <laughs> uh, 
Talarico, Joseph, English, National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. Schuler, Matthew David, Archaeology, General Directorate of Antiquities, Effort of Antiquities, Thessaloniki, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Now English Teaching Fellows, Hellenic American Educational Foundation, Barnett, Nick James, English Film and Classical Studies. Cardenas, Lauren Patrice, Educational Studies. Collins, Madeline Elizabeth, English. Davis, Olivia, English slash chemistry, music and classics. Deutsch, Rebecca Isabel, theater. Dittmers, Ivan Rothair, classical studies. Economos, Ioana, Economics, Chinese Language, and Literature. <laughs> Libo, Sadie Ann, English, Government, and Law. <laughs> Lewis, Stephanie Burke, Education Curriculum. <laughs> Prisbilski, Kathleen Ann, English slash creative writing, secondary education. <laughs> Rue, Kyle John, biological sciences and classics. <laughs> Wauke, okay. Melody Ann, classics. <laughs> Zimmer, Christopher Scott, history slash political science, secondary education. And lastly, me. Thank you, Georgia, and congratulations to all. Uh, I, too, have been fortunate and very privileged to be a part of this uh, very supportive and vibrant community of food writers uh, as part of the 2012 uh, Secondary Educators Program and bringing a little bit of the US back on the very remote Greek island of Leros, where I teach. Uh, but on to the true stars of the evening, as I'm sure all their, you know, their family and parents agree. Uh, here are the Greek program recipients 2018-2019. Visiting scholars, Alevriado Anastasia, the Ohio State University Special Education and Teaching. Gabunelli Maria, University of California, Berkeley, International Law. Gofas Andreas, New York University Global Studies. <laughs> Katsula Spiridon, Boston University Diplomatic History. <laughs> Maglara Giliki, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Oncology and Cancer Biology. Milu Krisovaladu Vasiliki, Columbia University Economics. <laughs> Pervanidu Panagiota, National Institutes of Health, Pediatrics. <laughs> Stathopoulos Kostadinos, National Institutes of Health, Biochemistry, Biophysics, and Molecular Biology. <laughs> Celios Vasilios, the University of Chicago, Geography. <laughs> Zografos Alexandro, Stanford University, Organic Chemistry. <laughs> Doctoral dissertation visiting research students. Gruzis Kostadinos, University of Georgia, Economic Geography. <laughs> Kambolis Isidoros, University of South Florida, Geology, Geochemistry. Kurukli Eleana, the George Washington University Medical Sciences Respiratory Pediatrics. 
Panutopoulos Anargyros Anastasios Anargyros, Columbia University Contemporary History. Zdukopoulos Eleftherios, the University of Memphis Maritime Transportation. Shigani Antonio, University of Missouri Radio Pharmaceutical Chemistry. Skeparnias Ilias, National Institutes of Health, Cellular and Molecular Biology. Graduate students, Anagnostopoulou Eleni, University of California, Berkeley, Law and Technology. Arslanidi Despina, New York University, Corporation Law. Hadzopoulos Georgios, Harvard University, Architecture. Mavrogiannis Angelos, Carnegie Mellon University, Mechanical Engineering. Trifoni Iris, University of New Hampshire, Economics. Tiftis Mikhail, Manhattan School of Music, Music, Jazz, Guitar. Varela Geliki Paraskevi, the University of Chicago Business Administration. And for the artists, Karayan Kohar Iris, Movement Research in New York, Contemporary Dance Performance and Choreography. Papa Costadino Elisabeth, Stanford University, New Media Performances. Simopoulos Alexandros, Santa Fe Art Institute Residency, Visual Arts Illustration and Murals. <laughs> Teachers and Administrator Institutes for Secondary School Educators. Vlachos Kosmas, Institute for Training and Development, Amherst, Individual Rights and Social Obligations. <laughs> Summer Institutes for Student Leaders from Europe. Malios Anastasios, University of South Carolina, Carolina, Colombia, Civic Engagement. <laughs> Papa Ioannou Ioannis, University of Oregon, Eugene, Environmental Issues. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, the Salzburg Global Seminars, Htenidu Elisabeth, Seminar on American Studies. Siciliani Violeta, Seminar for Young Cultural Innovators. <laughs> Nomido Caterini, Seminar on Health and Healthcare Innovation in the 21st Century. <laughs> Congratulations to all, good luck, and thank you. A little more and we're almost there. So for the last two years plus, I had the good fortune to collaborate with film director, producer, Irini Stiru, who went on a Fulbright grant in 2007-2008 at the San, at San Francisco State University. And uh, we've worked together. I think she hears from me more often than she would like to, to produce these wonderful 12 film portraits that you can see on the YouTube Fulbright channel. But today you're going to see a short film about Fulbright. Irini, thank you. Uh, I guess tonight's hashtag is young at 70. <laughs> Uh, so back in 2016, when we started discussing with Artemis about creating anniversary video content, we decided to emphasize on the Fulbright experience and the power of education, because this, is, this changes lives, and even more, it has a positive impact in our communities. And my favorite quote from Senator Fulbright is that, the future is not in the stars, but in our minds and hearts. And I think this is the, the premise of the uh, film that you're going to watch. Um, 
I would like me and my uh, main creative collaborator in this film, Adonis Katrakazis, would like to thank everybody that participated and contributed in the film, especially the alumni, because they gave their energy and their time to share, their, uh, to share on camera, which is even harder, <laughs> their Fulbright experience. Uh, we would like to thank the institutions that hosted us in their premises. Among them is the Gennadius Library and the American School of Classical Studies. And we definitely want to thank the foundation, and especially Artemis, for trusting us with this project. It's an honor. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy. educational exchange program. We celebrate Fulbright. This mountain of mine, I'm gonna say what I wanna say. Do, do what I wanna do. I'm gonna find another way to climb this mountain of mine. Woo Fulbright is one of the best symbols of the American commitment to building educational bridges. Well, even if the exchange program is an inexpensive one, do you think it really has justified its cost to the taxpayers? Well, I'm very prejudiced, Mr. Lesser. I think it is the most effective way to bring about better understandings and better relations among the various countries involved. It is the thousands and thousands of Greeks and Americans whose lives have been transformed by their experience as Fulbright scholars. I don't think that there's another time in your life or another program that would afford you the same experience. I think the Fulbright program gives students like me the opportunity to really delve into a culture and get to know a culture on a level that most people don't get to experience. You have a much better understanding of another country by going there and living among them than you do uh, listening to their propaganda or reading about them. James William Fulbright, a young man in his early 20s, coming from Arkansas, from Lafayetteville, a small provincial town, 51 years ago, in 1925, as a very young 20-year-old hillbilly from the Ozarks, I received a Rhodes Scholarship. And this completely transformed my life, of course, as you can imagine. His own experience as a Rhodes Scholar in Oxford in the early 20s made him realize how internationalism and educational exchange are intertwined. He realized how young Americans at that time had an ignorance about the world outside the United States. Two years later, when the end of the war occurred, in order to create a constituency for the concept of the United Nations, we needed a program of this kind in which people from all over the world could come to know one another, to understand and to respect the traditions and cultures and values of other people. And this was necessary to make the idea of the United Nations function. There were these vast amounts of property in various parts of the world that had been engaged in World War II. Such things as food, communications, trucks, transportations, and all such things, not just 
bombs and guns. There were many things that were useful to the countries. They wanted them, they were sold to them, and we accepted the government did what in effect their IOUs. It was logical under those circumstances to use the funds arising from such a purpose for the purpose of this cultural program. What makes Fulbright different from other international educational and cultural exchange programs is its binational nature, which is also always complemented by private support. There are donors, both in the US and in Greece, that believe in investing in education and the importance of educational exchanges. When people come back, first of all, they learn much more about the culture they went to but also they learn much more about themselves. Everybody doesn't look like you or operate like you do or have the same religion as you or the same values. One of the actual most enriching parts has been also figuring out how to live my own home life overseas. It's hard to move to a new country and to set up a life for yourself. Fulbright does that for you. Έχεις την ευκαιρία να γνωρίσεις κόσμο από όλα τα μέρη του πλανήτη. Γνώρισα την κουλτούρα τους, τον τρόπο που σκέφτονται. Να ανταλλάξεις εμπειρίες μαζί τους. Άκουγα διαρκώς ότι η υποτροφία του Fulbright ανοίγει πόρτες. Εγώ θα έλεγα ότι ουσιαστικά κατασκευάζει πόρτες και δημιουργεί διόδους εκεί που φαινομενικά υπάρχουν μόνο τύχη. We're proud to say that Fulbright Greece is the first Fulbright program in Europe and the second continuously operating in the world. Greece represents the birthplace of Western democracy, Western values, and makes Greece a natural home for one of our, our most dynamic and successful Fulbright programs. It was a war-ravaged country, and I think Fulbright came along at the time to be able to empower men and women by offering them training opportunities in the U.S. Despite historic events and hardships throughout the years, it has continued to operate without closing its doors for one day. The success, I would say, of the Fulbright Foundation in Greece relies on a wonderful team of dedicated professionals. Actually, what Fulbright does is threefold. It's the scholarships, the educational advising services for both studies in the US and in Greece, and also institutional linkages and programs that we do, and in general, cultural and educational exchanges from institution to institution. We have a very strong and committed team for providing educational advice about studies in the United States. We never uh, promote individual institutions, but we provide the skills, the knowledge, the guidelines to the students and the parents to be able to make their own selections. How many of your top academics, your top artists, your top officials have a Fulbright experience somewhere on their resume? Fulbright does create a community, local, national, and global. As the world gets smaller and smaller through international collaborations, getting a scholarship and working with someone for that long creates bonds that are going to last for a very, very long time, if not forever. Not only does it support you while you're here, but it does really seem to want to help you in the future. Οι δυνατότητες που σου δίνονται σε επίπεδο δικτύωσης είναι απεριόριστες. Προσπαθώ να μεταφέρω τα θετικά της διαφορετικής συνοτροπίας στη λειτουργία την καθημερινή του εργαστηρίου, του τμήματος, αλλά επίσης και στο κομμάτι της καθημερινής ζωής. Σε προσδιορίζει σαν άνθρωπο και σε, και σε βοηθάει να πάρεις πολλά περισσότερα εφόδια από το κομμάτι το καθαρά το εκπαιδευτικό. Education is life-changing. I mean, I grew up in a very low-income neighborhood. I was the first in my family to go to college. That's why I got into the education field, and it has changed lives. I've seen it change lives. It changed my own. Education is about opening your mind, opening your heart to things you didn't think existed, and going into places, into thoughts, into experiences that are new. Η εκπαίδευση είναι μία αργοκίνητη αλλά ισχυρή δύναμη. 
Αυτό που το πρωτοδιάβασα σε ένα από τα ενημερωτικά φιλέδια του Fulbright το ανακαλύπτω κάθε μέρα όλο και περισσότερο μπροστά μου στη δουλειά. Επίση, σου δίνεται η ευκαιρία να αλλάξει και τι ζωέ των γύρω σου, να τι επηρεάσει με έναν μοναδικό μαγικό τρόπο. I think education is the safest investment. It does not grant immediate results, but you're planting the seeds for a better future. And that's the real excitement um, of this program, the fact that it is an investment in the future, including the future of the U.S.-Greece relationship. Fulbright is as relevant as it was 70 years ago. It's still dynamic. It's a young program and can be an agent of change. What I wanna do, I'm gonna find Another way to climb this mountain of mine I'm gonna say what I wanna say Do, do what I wanna do I'm gonna find another way to climb this mountain of mine I'm gonna say I'm gonna about what to believe what it's true and who they wanted me to be I was letting all my fears decide for me everything my mind could be so I'm gonna say what I wanna say do what I want to do, I'm going to find another way to climb this mountain of mine. I'm going to say what I want to say. Do what I want to do, I'm going to find another way to climb this mountain of mine. <laughs> May I ask you to wait for a few minutes, please? So this magnificent team, Angie Fotaki, S. Yakos Hanape, <laughs> Nikos Kuridis, and Konstantina Kuturumba, is what makes Fulbright special. And I'm indebted for their hard work, amazing partnership, and special thanks to Angie for doing everything behind the scenes. At this point, we wish to thank you for joining us, and we would like to invite you for a Spartan Kerasma in the gardens and some wonderful jazz led by Teri Vakirjoglu and her team. Thank you for joining us, and please join us outside. <laughs>